I have one more piece for us today, and we said we're going to study tonal music, modal music, and atonal music. And Frank got into this atonal music more later in his career. He, he was always into it, uh, but he, he got into composing for orchestra and playing a, a much more atonal style. Now, atonal music is very, very interesting and uses certain concepts. I'm just going to play a little bit for you and uh, just, just give you a sense of kind of what atonal music sounds like. a different sound. In tonal music, and also in modal music, you have a center of gravity, which is the key. That's our center of gravity. We're home. In atonal music, there really isn't that kind of center of gravity. <clears throat> the music can go anywhere. So there's all kinds of different ways that you can create music without having a key. The key may shift, or there may be literally no key. Let's listen to this piece of Frank's. It's an orchestral piece, and it's called Envelopes. <laughs> That's another one of Frank's incredibly funny things. This was one funny guy, man. And Frank really wasn't just a musician. He was a universe. So this piece is... Um, one of his later compositions for orchestra, and uh, it's called Envelopes.
That is interesting music. <coughs> the key to understanding this music is to know what to listen for when you don't have a lot of the things that you used to, like a real kind of catchy melody like we had before. That piece definitely doesn't have any of that, or consistent harmonies. So what uh, Frank is doing, the first thing that you can notice about this kind of music is that the sound itself is called a composite sound. And so he has one sound that's made up of a few different parts. He has um, horns at the bottom, maybe like here. He has winds, usually in the middle, although it can move around. And he has, likes to have a high marimba up here. Now he plays all of that together. has a composite sound that sounds on a piano a little bit consistent, but when you do it with different instruments, it really sounds like, a, like another universe of sound made up of a few different parts. So you can call that a composite sound, and on this piece he uses that all over. Now, music is a language just like English or Spanish or any other language, and the similarity between the language part of speaking language and the language part of music is in the creation of phrases. So in this kind of music where you don't have a tonal center with gravity, here you're using more phrases. So he uses what we call dissonant clusters, which might be, for example, something like this. G, A flat, B, D. And he might move that same cluster around and make a phrase with it. Now Frank said that musical composition, music itself, is, mo is a matter of organized tones, organized sounds. The thing that makes it music is not so much the sound that we all know and grew up with, that sounds like music, but Frank's music like this also sounds like music, but it breaks our conventions of listening. So he has us hearing phrases and it's a conversation, so if you think in musical terms, you could think like this. I am going to the store. Stop, that's the end of our first phrase. I will get some bread there. And each phrase has probably up to about seven notes. Sometimes it's three or four. And he'll answer it with the next phrase. But it doesn't have to have a key or any conventional harmony. If you're using phrases and consciously connecting those phrases, making a conversation, you can pretty much play any notes you want, in a way. Now, he's conscious of the notes he's playing, but there are no rules like we conventionally have music uh, the way we learned it. So if he's thinking in phrases with dissonant clusters, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. As long as you can hear that phrase concept. It hangs together as music, and this is, this is a part of what Frank's doing in these kind of playing. Sometimes he uses repeated kind of movements, and we call this imitation. And we, just like we had in the other one, Here he's using more dissonant kind of imitations. <laughs> okay, and that kind of imitation immediately speaks to the ear as order, and that ordered tones creates music. He'll use a combination of steps and leaps, So the steps kind of give you a typical kind of a little motion in music. And then he'll leap. And the leap gives you a much more of an emotional sound. When you put that together with these kind of atonal clusters, it has a very unique kind of a, a texture. <laughs> he 
it's fun to play like that. Totally different. He uses different rhythms, uh, numbers of notes. So he'll use a combination of four, and then maybe three, and repeat that. Four, three. Okay? And then towards the end, he has different orchestras conversing with each other. So he play one phrase with one type of an orchestra. And then I'll have a totally different kind of orchestra maybe down here answering that. Okay? As long as he follows the rules of phrasing and he consciously connects his phrases, he can make almost anything work. And he was a master at this kind of music. And why don't we listen to that one more time with some of these ideas, and then we'll wrap it up for today. Thank you for hanging with me. I've had a great afternoon. I want to thank Miles. Miles, would you just come up here for a second and say hello to the folks? This is one of the great jazz pioneers in New York. Miles. Let's get this way. There he is. He built this beautiful club. Let's just turn it around for a moment. And this is a great new spot for jazz in New York on 52nd Street. And 52nd Street, of course, is, is a, a very historic jazz street. All the great uh, beboppers and, and other people played here uh, in the 50s and 40s. And now Miles has brought jazz back to 52nd Street. This time it's a little bit east, but that's okay. Um, what, what's the, the website people can go to? MilesCafe.com. Okay, MilesCafe.com. And Miles does a lot of teaching here. He does ensembles and um, almost every night, right? You're doing, he does classes here every night for people that want to learn how to play jazz. And he has events, so I recommend it highly. MilesCafe.com. Let's listen one more to envelopes, and then we'll put this evening in an envelope and take it home. So it's a kind of a conversation between an orchestra and percussion also. There we go. It's a descending cluster. He has that little funny rhythm that, that, that kind of makes the whole thing funny. notes move and then stop and that creates the end of the phrase where the notes stop. He's using those dissonant clusters with a composite sound. That's that impish thing. There's a nice phrase. He changes the articulation in the middle. And that helps the music sound like structure, order, even though it has no key. Now he brings different orchestras in. There's an imitation phrase. That makes it sound like music. Another orchestra. Back to another. It's like a cartoon a little bit. It's like 
Roadrunner. That's the whistle. Here's an orchestra. Different orchestra. Sometimes the melodies move fast, sometimes they move slow. You like those bells. Ah, I nice bring it up. He imitates the phrase. Bing, ba da dee yum. Bing, ba da dee yum. This sounds like Bartok. Bing, ba da dee yum. Bing, ba da dee yum. He imitates it. Yeah, that's steps and leaps. Great for touching. Now he ends it with these descending kind of clusters. Slows it down. That's beautiful music, man. Did you enjoy that, Miles? You enjoyed that? <laughs> well, I want to thank my, my fantastic technical assistant here who helped me put this whole Ustream thing together, Gal Carmi. Gal's the best. And also, I want to thank uh, my computer uh, guy, Joe Horvat, who, who taught me how to put together these uh, DVDs. Uh, I usually like to be a little spontaneous, so I'm just going to play us out today. Um, thank you for joining me. This is the third in the Ustream master classes. Uh, we, we, I have a, other classes up on Ustream if you'd like to enjoy them sometime. One is Charlie Parker. We had a great time with that last month. And then the first one was Keith Jarrett. And um, that one, the volume is, is uh, this is pre, pre-Gal, so the volume kind of goes up and down. But I'll probably redo that at some point. The next master class is going to be on April 7th, 2010. Uh, Frank and Camille's Pianos on 57th Street, and that is going to be Bruce Hornsby, and I think you'll enjoy that. So again, any questions, comments, show ideas, criticisms, complaints, you can throw tomatoes at DaveFrankJazz.com. Thank you so much for your time. Ciao for now.